Hey everybody, Jason here. We've produced some bonus field interviews from episode two in which Alec talks to Joe and I about rotational grazing, fertilizing, grass quality, and other land management projects around Small Axe Farm. We hope you enjoy this bonus footage and remember to do good and be good. One of the things that interests us about your farm is rotational grazing. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about rotational grazing. Well, the idea is that you don't just turn animals out into a pasture and let them have access to it 365. You, you bring them in when the grass is ready, you graze it to whatever height you want, and then you move them out and don't give them uh, access again to that same pasture until it's recovered. So how high will they graze down to? Mm -hmm. Um, it, it depends on a number of variables, um, you know, uh, what you're starting off with. Um, you have to take into account how much grass do I have ahead of me, how much do I have behind me. Um, but typically, the rough uh, calculation is you take half and leave half. Okay. Um, so that's what we did here. We brought it in when it was about a foot tall. We took it down to about six inches and we kept it moving that way. And so it's already, uh, it's back to about where it was. And about how many times do you rotate, mm -hmm. I guess? How, what are the frequencies of mm -hmm. rotation? Sure. Uh, well, again, it depends. Um, it depends on the weather conditions of the year and uh, what time of year. So this is cool season grass. We can graze this once in the winter when it's dormant. We can graze it again in the spring and uh, a third or fourth grazing in the late, uh, late summer, early fall. Awesome. Awesome. And what animals are grazing in this field? Uh, we have goats, cattle, and sheep all together as one unit. Okay. As all, all mixed in together. Yeah, and oh. this is kind of uniform, um, but the, the benefit to mixing all your species together is that, you know, cows prefer one type of grass, sheep prefer another, goats prefer, mm -hmm. you know, trees and bushes. Um, so by having them all together, everybody's going to find something that they like. And, and, they're so, all, and you get an even graze. Yeah, they're all taking care of the yeah. graze for what they like. Exactly. Now, I saw something about uh, introducing goats into an area to, to maintain, mm. like, parklands and mm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they were talking about on that video was that the, the hooves mm. actually have an important impact on the soil. Absolutely. Can you talk about that sure. a little bit? Yeah, uh, and cattle are even better. They're really heavy. Um, so ours are about 800 to 1,000 pounds. And what they do is they incorporate uh, uh, manure and also dead organic matter into the soil surface. And they also kind of break up the soil surface. Um, if you've ever seen dirt that gets too dry, it turns to concrete. And so you might have a rainfall, but it won't soak in. It just it runs right off. Oh, okay. Um, but so if you get some good hoof action, that'll incorporate organic matter, seeds, manure, all that stuff into the soil. It churns the soil, aerates it, and um, the bacteria love that. And so they feed the plant. It's like a giant compost heap. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> yep, yep. It's almost like nature intended. Uh, who thought? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what you can see here is that the grass is much thicker, taller, and darker green. Uh, and if you notice that and come by and look, you can see this is where a cow made a little deposit. Um, and so a cow manure has about a dollar's worth of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in it. The, the three most limiting um, nutrients in a grassland. And so every time we get a cow pat, that's a dollar bill. That's a dollar bill's worth of fertilizer. And the plants respond to it immediately. And this plant will benefit for a couple of years um, from that one little input. You see, the idea is through rotational grazing, you see these little patches of green, and every year they get bigger and bigger, and they spread and spread until your whole field looks like that. Uh, this field is mostly cool season grasses, so it starts growing in um, middle March and um, kind of reach, reaches its peak right about now in the summer, and, and then it just stops. Um, so what we did was we started grazing at one end of the field and we just progressed our way down every day or every other day they'd get a new break of grass uh, until we got to right up to about here and um, by that point it was mid to late june the grass had gotten too tough and so we moved the cows out to another area where the grass is more palatable um, they'll gain better in that situation uh, and that just gives this grass a further chance to rest um, when grass is not grazed, it doesn't have to spend energy building new leaves. It can put that energy in the form of carbohydrates down into the root reserves um, so that the next time it is grazed, it's got this great reserve of energy just waiting uh, to make new growth. 
So we'll graze all this off in the winter time. Um, it turns sweet in the winter. It looks kind of dead and brown now, uh, but the cows will absolutely gobble it up. Um, this will be better than any hay that we can make. Um, any grass on the stem is still better than any hay pretty much you can make. So we'll graze this in the winter, and next spring it's just gonna explode out of the ground because it's had um, a year's rest to recuperate from the last grade. Uh, this grass is about 18, 24 inches tall, um, and because it's ungrazed, it's acting as a good shade canopy for the, for the ground. So even though we haven't had rain for maybe six weeks, um, if you stick your finger into the top layer of the soil, it's still cool and a little bit damp. Um, so whereas the front field is dry like concrete because our residual forage is too short to shade it, out here um, the soil is still moderately damp and, and cool. Um, and because these are cool season grasses, they really like the roots to be cool. So they'll continue to grow even into the summer when all the neighbor's fields have uh, it's gone actually to nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can see here, this is a path that I, I drove the truck up and to either side the grass was left alone and so these guys got to full maturity they produced seed and at that point the grass stops growing but because i drove the truck up and back here all the seed heads were knocked off and the seed heads produce a growth regulating hormone and so when you take that seed head off the plant still thinks it's time to grow so this grass you can see is um, it's tastier it's still growing um, cows would if we turned them in here now they would graze this strip first and then they would go for these other two strips. So what I wanted to show you here is kind of the long-term vision that we have for the, uh, the forest portion of the property. Here we had a big tree come down and it's letting light come through. And so now you suddenly have growth where there was no growth before. Um, so the idea is to go through the woods and manage it and to take out your worst trees first, the crooked ones, the leaners, uh, you take those down for firewood or for lumber. We have a sawmill here. Uh, and by doing that, by opening up the canopy, you can let enough light through to stimulate growth. Um, it will naturally turn to ferns, but if we bring pigs in here and just scuff up the top inch or two of soil, it'll come back as grass. We don't have to plant any seed. Um, the seed's already in the seed bank. We can, we can speed that up by incorporating seeds, but it's not necessary. And so that, is that mostly um, because of, you said pigs specifically, so is that mostly a feature of pigs? Or? Absolutely. It's what they love to do. Um, in the old times, this, the whole Shenandoah National Park, people would turn their pigs out during the winter and let them forage, and they would just roam the hills and uh, get plenty to eat. And so we're going we're gonna to bring them back here, and they're going to partner with us in this. Uh, the land can be more productive. It can not only grow trees, but also grass in the understory. Uh, and in, the, in return, the pigs get to do what they love best. They get to root and eat and... Uh, they're happy and we're happy. And what kind of um, birds or other creatures live here that, that are you know guests as well? Uh, you name it. Um, we've seen uh, coyotes, bear, uh, turkey, um, cranes and herons, you know, more frogs than you can shake a stick at, lightning bugs. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it's pretty epic. Yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, gully. And there's the peepee. Yeah, well, uh, this is fly larvae. So flies come and they lay their eggs in the, the manure and uh, they grow and then they hatch and then they bother the cows. But because we rotate, typically by the time they start hatching out, the cows are far away. So the fly problem is not nearly as bad as it would be if we just turned them loose to the whole pasture all the time. Um, we don't deworm with ivermec. So we have dung beetles, so they will destroy the manure pets faster and so the flies don't have as much time um, yeah. and this is another reason why we want chickens at some point I don't ever want to do meat birds but if we uh, ever do uh, laying hens what they would be doing is following two or three days behind the cows so right when the manure pat is starting to make larvae the chickens come in and they just obliterate it and they eat every last little worm larvae that they can find so you don't have to use any chemicals no sprays. The cows are happy because they're not covered in flies. The chickens are happy because they get a free meal. You get free eggs. I mean, it's just... It's yeah, I'm on a number of permaculture groups. Yeah. And people are like, what should I do to turn over my compost or get chickens? Get chickens. Pigs. Pigs, <laughs> man. Yeah. We've got a hay feeding pile. See see how weedy it is? This is where they fed hay for years. It's, it's five feet deep of old rotten hay. 
and because they abused the land so bad, only weeds would grow there. Um, but this is this is prime pig territory right here. They're gonna just crush it, and we're gonna start back over. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. And the pigs are happy. See, they're partners. Yeah. I've got a goal. I want to turn that into more productive land. They've got a goal. I want to be a pig and dig shit up. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I got great news. <laughs> I got just a spot. <laughs>